So of course, psychologists have experimented with classical conditioning and the fear of loss. So can you actually create or the negative emotions, can you actually make people be scared of something through classical conditioning? Instead of ringing a bell and serving food for a dog, so it kind of connects, wow, when I'm ringing with a bell, I kind of, oh, I'm getting hungry. Could you instead make people scared of something through classical conditioning? And, da da da, you can. So what they did was they took an 11 year old boy called Albert. This is called the Little Albert Experiment. It was done in like the early 20s. It's like 1920. And what they did was they took this, he was sitting there with his mom, and they showed him all kinds of different animals. They showed him a dog, they showed him a rabbit, and they showed him this little white rat. And he was 11 months old. He was not fond of him, he was kind of curious about, well, there's an animal, he got to touch the animals and stuff like that. Really great, he was really cute. And of course, now you should consider the ethics of this experiment because after they've done that for a while, they said, now we want to try to make a negative classical conditioning. So you've got to connect something bad with the rat. So what they did was they gave him the rat again. And every time he touched the rat, he had a bar of steel behind his head. And he kind of just hit this bar of steel to make a very large noise, very loud noise like this. Bang! And he did that six times. Only six times they had to do this, making him very scared six times while he touched the rat, and now he was scared of the rat. So, now he was scared of the rat, right? Just conditioning fear into this little 11-year-old, 11-month-old boy, he's very young. So, that worked pretty good. But, the funny, the interesting thing was, he kind of generalized this fear. So he wasn't only afraid of rats now, he was afraid of other animals as well. He was afraid of the dog and the cat. He was even afraid of, of men with white fur jackets. He was afraid of, of, like, he generalized it, so he kind of expanded this. So the conditioning was not just the single rat, but things that were similar to the rat, who had this fur that was similar to this. So of course, the idea should, well, the idea should be that could you actually make people, oh, sorry, could you actually make people not wanting something by doing the same in advertisers? Could we do the same, could we use the same principle? And this is widely used in health advertising, just as you saw with, with Listerine, but this is more used for non-smoking and for uh, diseases, sexual diseases. So of course it's not very nice, but here you let's we'll look at AIDS as a spider. This is more trying to use the metaphor, but also consider the feeling it's not very nice. We have the same feeling, uh, the same ad for men. Don't go to bed with another person without a condom, of course, is the main message. And there's all kinds of different aspects of this. It could also be smoking, trying to show how, how unhealthy it is and how your teeth are going to be. Just trying to communicate this feeling, trying to connect it with something bad. Of course you saw the spider uh, and scorpion uh, advertised before. It's very unpleasant, I think. It's really trying to tap into these negative feelings of, and this is your lungs, which is going to be smoked away in different ways. So of course trying to create this, you're going to connect this feeling with next time you take a smoke. That's of course their main idea. It could also be something more harsh, like this is Mothers Against Drunk Driving Promotion a Safe Graduation, showing this picture, this is the graduation picture, where she was drunk driving and died. Right, this is pretty harsh, and they actually take it a step further, so they put like picture of this on a windshield facing the, like the interior part of the car, urging drivers not to speed in your schools. As you see, it's on here. And this is the commercial. So you kind of get this commercial on your, f on your windshield, on your car, trying to make it this impression. Wow. Okay, I get the impression. This could be a very unpleasant situation, being in some kind of slowdown. 
So the question is, will fear work alone? Can we actually do this? Can I say, ah, you should be scared now. Make a commercial like this and people will stop smoking or people will slow down and not speeding. It's interesting thought. Can we actually do this? So what people have been investigating is let's try to do different kind of, let's make a very intense fear, to create a very intense fear in people and create less intense fear and see what happens. So what they did in this study from the 50s was, well, they asked a group of high school students, they were the target group, to brush their teeth in a specific way. So the experiment was to measure these different intensities of fear appeal. And this is just by giving them 15 minutes of some kind of talk and showing them 20 pictures. And this was done in three conditions or three forms. One form, which is heavily and strong and intense on fear. Another condition which wasn't that fearful and a third condition which was very factual and not inducing any fear at all. The recommendations you wanted to do was well, this is basically the one they want to do. The teeth should be brushed with an up and down vertical stroke. The inner surface of the teeth should be brushed as well as the outer surface. And of course, this makes sense for most people who brush their teeth every day. The teeth should be brushed gently using only a slight amount of force and so forth. These were the things they were measuring on afterwards and before. So the first condition, form one, it's a very strong field appear showing very unpleasant, uh, very unpleasant pictures and actually maybe even lying but saying things like if you ever develop an infection of this kind from improper care of your teeth it will be an extremely serious matter because these infections are really dangerous they can spread to your eyes your heart and your joints and cause secondary infections which may lead to diseases such as arthritic paralysis kidney damage or total blindness da 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 Remember that tonight. You can be blind from not brushing your teeth. So this is really focusing on a fearful message. Very strong. The second one wasn't that, it was milder, more factual. And the third condition was of course more like how does the teeth develop? How, um, well, how do they neglect and so forth? Just being very factual about it. More about the growth of teeth and the functions. So this is just a basic fact over how much, for example, how much did they talk about pain from toothaches. And of course, in the high fear appeal, it was 11 times mentioned. In the low, it wasn't mentioned at all. Cancer paralysis blindness was only mentioned in the high fear appeal. Teach pulled out and so forth. Very much in the high, only a single time in the moderate and so forth. The more sore, the swollen, inflamed gums, mentioned a lot of times in the high and the moderate, not a much, that much in the low. So this is just to show you how much was actually used. And this is, uh, well, this is just the attitude uh, to the communication. So they kind of found that the illiterate talk does a very good teaching job. Well, most people thought that the strong, uh, the strong communication, the strong fear appeal was very effective and it was very interesting. Actually, most people thought that. And it was easy to pay attention to what speakers were saying. Well, if you saw all these fearful pictures, it was very easy to pay attention to. My mind practically never wanted. Well, my mind never wanted. It, it did wonder, but it didn't want it that much when I was really scared. So the quiz for now is, in what condition do you think people worry most about their teeth afterwards? A, in the low fear appeal, B, medium fear appeal, or the high fear appeal? Or oh, they all felt the same. So how, how many say A, the low fear appeal? How many say B, there was no one? So that's three guys. And C, high fear appeal. And that's the rest, around 20. And of course it makes sense if you try to scare people, most people are gonna be scared in the high fear appeal. Okay, so that was interesting. We don't know, you can scare people, it makes sense, it's common sense. And this next thing should also be common sense, shouldn't it? So, where did people change their behavior most towards doing these recommendations? A, the low fear appeal, B, the medium fear appeal, C, the high fear appeal, oh no, one changed. 
So how many say A, the low fear pill? No one. How many say B, medium fear pill? One, two. And C, how many? That's the rest, around 20. So actually scaring people will make them change. No, no, no. It's the opposite way around. Actually, if you really scare people, you don't change their behavior at all. Well, below 10%. Where we actually give them a very low fear view. That's interesting. And why is it so? We're going to get back to that after the break.